let's continue with chapter six and this video lecture is for learning objectives 6.4 and 6.5 in the previous objective for this chapter we talk about the decision making process consumers go through um, depending on different factors right such as the level of involvement uh, depending on the experience and internal variables, right? Motivation, etc. Personality, and also external factors, situational and social related. But the, that part of the chapter focus on individual consumers. For example, you as an individual buyer uh, deciding to purchase. Um, something for you. Now there is another side of um, business marketing which deals with selling to organizations, selling to other businesses and other enterprises, not the final consumers. Many businesses, their their major uh, their their major um, activity is oriented towards other organizations sometimes it's only for other businesses that they produce and sell goods and services and and this is actually what most of the sales transactions accounts for most of the dollars in in sales not only in the united states but worldwide is accounted for by transactions between businesses, between organizations, not between businesses and consumers, which is the so-called business to business, sorry, business to consumer or B2C marketing. Here we will talk about B2B marketing in which the same products or some product which would be utilized by individual consumers like you see on the left hand side image cupboards open uh, folder and pens these same products manufactured by, by a firm are also um, targeting business organizations who in the same way will utilize cupboards and ovens and folders and pens but the way in which the purchase decision making goes is totally different compared to the individual consumer here we need to classify customers business customers in three major categories the first type of customers in the b2b business to business marketing relations is producers as we see here on the left hand side producers are those entities that uh, create or produce as the name says goods and services from agricultural products fishing lumber industry right the primary sector to the secondary sector right which is not producing agricultural um, uh, goods but manufacturing transforming those raw materials those um, primary products into secondary products. This is what is called the secondary sector, manufacturing, right? Uh, construction also goes into here. So a car uses um, inputs, materials from the primary sector to be transformed and give it more value and, and and deliver the deliver goods and services that are already manufactured and the tertiary sector services this is uh, financial transportation uh, hospitality food and beverage recreation etc these are services basically so we have primary right fishing agricultural etc secondary sector manufacturing and tertiary which is services. So these are 
business organization customers that you can sell inputs you can sell um, things for for their activities resellers is the second category resellers are entities or participants in in supply chain and or distribution channels the manufacturers of laundry machines will distribute and sell their laundry machines through retailers right like sears like walmart like um, home depot etc so they will sell them through channels of distribution which are in this case resellers wholesalers or distributors and retailers and finally the third type of business customers are organizations that are more in the scope of government either federal state or local and non-profit institutions including ngos right non-government organizations non-profit institutions universities churches schools so they also have vendors right just like a, a, a farmer in the producer category have needs and, and they have vendors for seeds and fertilizer etc and the same way that resellers have their own suppliers the same way uh, uh, um, a university like this right it, it needs uh, printers copy machine the um, the tables and chairs where you sit in your classroom classroom so these are part of this business marketplace uh, customers now the differences between business consumers and uh, individual consumers between the business market and consumer market are are several first of all when we talk about the standard decision making process in the previous video we said that this internal and its external influences and what you have to consider in a consumer's decision making is at the individual level is one single person who makes the decision of course influenced by family maybe by friends or other um, participants but in the case of business markets business customers you have uh, multiple parties, uh, individuals who are involved in the decision making process. So the decision making process is not just based on one person's um, uh, choice, but is on a number of of by um, uh, participants, right? And we will go over uh, over that in in few more minutes. Number of customers, whereas for final consumers you have thousands or tens of thousands or millions of consumers that you sell your your uh, your shoes brand your smartphone brand etc in the case of business market you have a more reduced number of customers let me go back a couple of slides to this comparison um, whereas for consumer markets you have literally millions of uh, potential customers for for cupboards individual consumers for business market you have a smaller number of organizations who will purchase your cupboards if you think in the case of corpus christi right with few hundred thousand consumers you may say well you have uh, 300,000 or 200,000 consumers potential buyers of cupboards individually or for folders and pens uh, or for ovens whereas if you think of Corpus Christi business market organizations schools um, enterprises you will be reducing this potential number of business customers to probably some hundreds right probably a couple of thousands uh, organizations 
So you have a smaller number of customers in the business to business um, market. You have them also in a geographic concentration that is smaller, more is more focused, right? If you think in the state of Texas, well, you may say uh, we have so many individual consumers in the population throughout the whole state in Houston, Dallas, El Paso, Austin, San Antonio, etc. But if you if you sell, for example, to um, to the energy sector, if you are a supplier or vendor to petrochemical industries, you have a much a much smaller number of refineries, for example. So you have several refineries, but they are not all over the state. They are concentrated in certain geographical areas, right? Like, like here in Corpus Christi, in the Houston surrounding area, in Baytown, uh, Pasadena, etc., and, and other places. But your target in terms of geographic location of your customers will be reduced and focal, focalize, focus on a specific places. And the size of the purchases. Of course, this will be uh, another major difference. The size of the purchases is much larger volumes, whereas you sell one or two um, uh, boxes of cupcakes uh, or cereal, cupboards, sorry, cupboards or folders and pens in small quantities to the, consu the individual consumer, to the business <clears throat> market, you will sell boxes of cupboards, uh, several ovens maybe for an office, you will sell um, uh, not just one, but various ovens and boxes of folders and pens or cases of whatever other product we are talking about. So these volumes or the sizes of the purchases will, will be much larger. So that's why business to business market um, transactions uh, in terms of dollar sales account for most of the mm, transactions compared to individual consumers. Now, some characteristics that we need to look at regarding the, the demand in business to business mm, settings is that demand is derived, demand is inelastic, is fluctuating, and is joint. What do we mean by this? When we say that demand is derived, it we mean that, for example, you're um, compared to business to consumer settings, you have a direct relation, a direct effect from the demand. You sell goods and services to the final consumer, so your demand is directly determined by your immediate customer who you sell goods and service too. But for business to business markets, you have a derived demand. So for example, the demand for, um, this is an example you have in your textbook, right? This is a, an example you have in your textbook. And this has to do with the demand of um, paper for, for textbook. So if you are uh, a producer, right, forestry products, you are in the primary sector. Well, your forestry products, your wood and lumber, that's needed for um, producing the pulp that is used for producing paper, that is used for textbooks and education, right? So going back, by the way, using this example of corn, going back to the explanation of derived demand, if a corn producer sells its corn to cornflakes company or post cereal company, well, the demand of corn will be, will, will be uh, indirectly 
determined by the demand of the cornflake cereal that is sold to the final consumer, right? So that's why we say that it is not an immediate direct uh, effect from the um, purchaser demand, but it, go, it, it comes in a derived, derived way through the um, middleman or the producers in between. When we say that demand is inelastic, what we mean here is that a change in the price of corn, for example, uh, will not make the cornflakes company to, to reduce its uh, consumption of corn. The, if corn is used for producing cornflakes, even if the price of corn goes up, well, the, the manufacturer of cereal will not, they will not uh, stop buying corn, right? Because they have a demand to fulfill from final consumers. So even if it's a small increase or a large increase, they will still need the corn to produce cornflakes because there is a steady demand uh, from the final consumers. So that cost probably will be absorbed by the, uh, by the company. The same thing when we uh, think about car manufacturers. If there is an increase in the price of um, tires, right? Well, the, 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 the automobile company will not stop making cars because there was a, an increase in the price of tires. They will probably look for other uh, supplier if, if they offer the same product uh, specifications or they will absorb the cost because they need the tires in order to complete a car. Demand is fluctuating. That means that the, if the increase or decrease of demand is magnified, is greater, this fluctuation is, is much greater than in business to consumer settings. For example, if there is, a, let's say, a, an, in, uh, an increase in the interest rates and therefore financing for cars for the population is more expensive because of this increase in interest rates, that will affect the demand for automobiles, right? But this demand will be magnified because it's for the whole industry. It's not just for a few um, cars, but it's for the whole car industry and the whole, and it will affect greatly uh, for Ford Motor Company and Chevrolet and, and the big ones, right? So it, it's going to be um, an exponential, we, we could say, uh, effect of the demand, either up or down. That, that works in both ways. If there is a, a sudden increase in demand because of economic conditions and people are buying more cars, then that will also benefit uh, in a positive way, the whole industry. And the third type of um, characteristic is joint. Joint demand means that you need two or more goods or uh, inputs to produce a car, for example, right? Or, or cornflakes. So um, if for some reason there is a hurricane that mm, affects the the growing regions, uh, the, 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 the north central part of the United States, which is the region where uh, there is corn grown. Well, if there is a scarcity of corn, well, that, that scarcity of corn will affect the production of cornflakes and other, other producers or supplier of Kellogg's company will suffer because, for example, sugar, sugar producers who, you, who sell to cornflakes company, they will not have a demand for their product, not because the cost of the product went up, just because there is a scarcity in one of the other products used for uh, manufacturing or producing cornflakes. The same thing with the automobile example. 
if for some reason there is a uh, commercial battle or um, uh, increase in tariffs to import rubber for the tires, well, if there is a decrease in the availability of tire or iron or something else, then that will also affect the demand of other of other suppliers for the automobile company like audio system uh, radios and audio systems mp3 players that go into the um, audio system of the automobile they will have smaller demand because other component which was tires is not available so that's of course a uh, uh, an illustration of this effect of joint demand, right? There are three basic types of um, buy classes called the type of purchases that are made by um, companies. So when we look at the final consumer, the individual consumer decision making, we say, well, there are different um, uh, purchasing situations you 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 could develop some loyalty to, toward products and you buy in a routine habit, habitual way the same product over and over well that happens also for business and organization that is called the straight rebuy once that you buy a product that is satisfactory that it, it is, is what you need for your operations in your firm you probably will do future purchases in a routinary way sometimes not sometimes you need to some changes different specification of products so you need you, you don't do an automatic purchase over and over so that is the modified rebuy you change some elements some specifications or the price maybe of the um, product you get from the vendors and the third scenario is a completely new new task buy and that is like for instance if you are going to launch a new product and you need new production um, uh, inputs and you need the raw materials for a new version of a product you launch then you will do through the new purchase the new task buy which will be the third type of buy class just like we saw in the first part of this chapter the standard decision making process for individual consumers you have some steps or some stages that businesses go through although these are not under one single consumer who 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 uh, experiences these stages this includes a number of participants first there is a recognition of the problem right someone who uh, realizes that there is a need to uh, acquire some um, product from a vendor here in, in in the university for example if the projector in the classroom breaks down well then someone either the professor or, or some of the students or whoever is in charge of technical um, equipment that they will recognize that there is a need to buy another projector or fix it or do something about it then that goes to another area another office that will be doing the purchasing uh, the the, uh, the the search for information for purchasing options right considering the product specifications the suppliers available the prices right quotations and that follows the that will be followed by the evaluation of the quotations of the proposals the alternatives in order to make a stage in a step four a, a a purchase order issues a purchase order and of course there is a post-purchase evaluation to document performance to see if it's a product that meets the specifications and that will be part of the, this information to decide whether you do let me go back one 
stage whether you will do a straight rebuy or not or next time modify uh, uh, the the purchase or look for another vendor maybe so these are the stages the number or, or the roles of people within this um, process first of all the initiator as i said if you find out that the projector in the classroom broke down then you or i as a professor are the ones who will bring this up to another office who will be the ones in charge of um, uh, controlling the information that goes to others in the organization what this means is that for example the vendors who sell projectors the, this this gatekeeper is the one who will um, have the list of potential vendors decide whether more vendors will be included in uh, considered for the purchase or not you have some technical staff personnel or knowledgeable um, parties who will be influencing as the name said these are influencers who help in or assist in making a decision as to which projector um, should be purchased right so this is a concurrent not necessarily in sequence but this is a a process that may, may overlap or be concurrent in some stages like the gatekeeper the buyer or purchasing agents um, at the same time obtaining information or assistance from the influencer or the this the recommendation for influencers and engineers etc and there is another uh, person well depends on the organization a decider who may be someone who does the same role as gatekeeper of not i mean in small companies you don't have so many different roles but maybe one person the, the general manager of a small organization a restaurant or small store the general manager will do all of this but of course we are taking the stance or the perspective of a large company the decider the whoever approves making um, that purchase uh, using the budget for that and a buyer which may be or not again uh, a separate agent usually these are um, again in large organizations large companies procurement officers buying agents or directors of material managers these are usually the titles of these individuals and last but not least just in the same way that information technology eruption into modern day um, business has impact on individual consumers business to consumers marketing in the same way we see an increase in importance for b2b marketing right many of these <clears throat> business to business relationships which in the past were fundamentally relying on personal selling and and personal interaction now occur through platforms uh, for e-commerce using either intranet <clears throat> using either intranet or extranet uh, platforms for communication keeping records of um, purchase orders etc uh, or through social media right many of the companies that have a fundamental or main target segment as business uh, other businesses they use platforms like linkedin twitter facebook those are the percentages here of um, business um, professionals who use uh, these social media platforms according to a recent survey uh, b2b marketers use it utilize these um, platforms in these percentages for exchanging um, information and eventually uh, placing uh, the, assisting or aiding 
purchase decisions for uh, business reasons. So I'm going to stop here. Again, this is the, the, the last part of chapter six, focus on business to business marketing. And this is for learning objectives 6.4, 6.5. Thank you.